I am joined now by a friend of mine and uh, the executive director of Yada's on Liberty Bowl, Mr. Harold Grader. Harold, welcome back on the Mitch Davis Show. It's been a minute. How are you been doing? Doing well, Mitch. I appreciate you having me back on. It's always a pleasure and uh, always love talking college football with you. Let's uh, let's just jump right into the season before we even talk about the autos on Liberty Bowl. What have you uh, what have you been excited to see so far this season? Well, it's been a really interesting year. Uh, it's been a year where you thought one thing at the beginning of the season, you thought one thing differently at midseason, and as we head into November, maybe thinking something else. Uh, you know, teams that traditionally have won. Uh, some aren't doing that. Those uh, also who haven't been traditional winners have picked up their game and, and have won uh, this year and are, are right on the verge of, of bowl eligibility. So it's been an interesting year, especially in the two conferences that we're affiliated with, with the SEC and uh, the Big 12. Uh, so as we enter uh, the first week of November, you know, we start really taking a closer look at uh, the what ifs and the possibilities. And, you know, to this point, uh, usually the herd tends to thin a little bit and you have a, a somewhat of an idea of the path forward on your team selection. That has not been the case this year. We thought maybe this past weekend's games would, would give us a, a an inkling. Not really. So now we're hoping maybe this coming Saturday's game. So, um, it, that's what makes the, the job fun, intriguing, interesting. Uh, no two years are the same. And certainly in this football season, no two weeks have been the same. And, uh, you know, to see uh, Tennessee emerge uh, out of the SEC and what they've done over there, LSU with, with Brian Kelly has been one of the great stories of the year. Um, and then on the Big 12 side, you know, early on, Kansas, a, a team that uh, has struggled over the past, you know, 10 years or so to see them get off to a fast start. And then out of, also out of the Big 12, the, the two teams that will eventually be in the SEC, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, you know, they uh, continue to evolve with uh, with new coaches and especially at OU uh, with with a coach in his first year as the head coach there, Brett Venables there at, at OU. So uh, interesting storylines uh, and interesting uh, players uh, who have jumped up on the scene uh, to follow them and see uh, how the year uh, ends for those teams and those players. You know, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who are uh, – we'll start with the SEC. Do you have a group of teams that you guys have really started to focus in on right now? You know, again, up until now, it, it the path forward really hasn't been that clear, and it, it's still more or less that same way as we head into the first Saturday of November uh, coming up this week. Uh, you know, when, when you look at what the national media uh, is projecting for us uh, on the SEC side, you know, there's a mention or two about Florida, several about South Carolina, Arkansas it is mentioned uh, by uh, some of the national media. Uh, you know, I was at the Arkansas Auburn game this past week, uh, checking out the, the Razorbacks. That's a team that we haven't had in a while. And since they're what I call one of the neighborhood schools where the fans can drive easily, you know, certainly the Razorbacks are a team that we're keeping an eye on. So on the SEC side, I, again, uh, I, we got to wait a week or two before I think before we start getting a clearer picture of of what the possibilities uh, may be there for us. Personally speaking, I would love to see Arkansas here. I think uh, the Liberty Bowl, as they used to call the the pyramid, they called it the pyramid. I would yeah. love to have Arkansas be at the autos on Liberty Bowl. But, Harold, I want to ask you, the Big 12 side, things to be a little bit more clear. Are there a group of teams you guys are paying attention to? Maybe so over there. Again, not, not a totally clear path. And, again, there's some big games yet to be played in the Big 12, just like it, it isn't just about all the other conferences. You know, TCU has been the great story there in, in uh, the, the Big 12. They're undefeated right now. Uh, are they going to run the table, win the championship, and, and be one of the final four? We'll see. Uh, here of late, uh, Kansas State has picked it up uh, and had some good wins. So they're right in the mix there in the Big 12. Uh, you know, then again, you know, you look at Texas and OU, the two teams that, as we say, you know, are headed to the SEC uh, in future years and, and seeing how they continue to evolve. You know, I think Texas 
certainly better than they were a year ago. OU with uh, the new coach, uh, with uh, Lincoln Riley going out west to, to USC. You know, I, I know they're not meeting expectations there, but again, new coach, new philosophy, you know, uh, still trying to feel their way through things. Uh, but but when you're among the elite and you're those those huge huge big brands in college football, Texas and OU, you expect them at some point uh, to figure it out and to have success. So we'll see how the rest of the year goes uh, for those two teams. You know, staying on the topic of uh, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, I, I've been meaning to ask you this question because it's kind of gone in the place now. NIL, obviously, everybody's yeah. talking NIL. Does that have any effect on bowl games or? what you guys can give players and, you know, nowadays, or does that really not have much? Well, knowledge? we'll see about that, Mitch. And that's a great question. Uh, we certainly see it impacting individual teams and individual programs and, and how that's impacting uh, recruiting. Uh, you know, in, in the bowl world, you know, we're able to give uh, gift packages to each player uh, with a $550 price limit on it. Your question is about NIL. Last year, there were just a handful, maybe less than a handful of bowls who kind of dipped their toe into the NIL world. Um, you know, we're still assessing that here at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, whether that's something we want to do, need to do. Uh, you know, all of us in, in the bowl world are certainly uh, concerned and keep an eye on uh, the transfer portal or players opting out of bowl games. Um, you know, would an NIL deal prevent that? Um, not sure, because when you look at what's out there, at least on the recruiting side of things, that, that the numbers you hear are just huge numbers. And, and no bowl game uh, could, could budget for that uh, easily. Uh, so do you, do you try to go there in, in baby steps? Don't know. We, we haven't made that decision yet. Um, I, I guess if we had to, we, we would if we thought it was necessary. But we haven't crossed that bridge and have had uh, very little of any conversation about it. But some bulls did uh, engage in NIL a year ago. I know one of those in particular was the Barstool. The yeah. new Barstool Bowl, they're doing NIL stuff. You know, the thing about it was so interesting from y'all's standpoint from us is what a bowl game do. I think you just kind of hit the nail on the head as it's like everything else. You just got to have to wait and see. But, you know, kind of say on the same topic, obviously, you know, things have changed to the autos and Liberty Bowl through the years. And I want to ask you in particular, this year is going to be a little bit more special. The 40th anniversary yeah. of uh, Paul Bear Bryant, Coach Bryant, coaching his final game at the University of Alabama, who happened to coach here at Memphis. What What is planned? I know there's some exciting things uh, tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, November 1st at the Touchdown Memphis Club. Talk about all the exciting things that you guys are going to do. Yeah, yeah, you know, this is year 64 for us at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. We're college football's seventh oldest bowl game. So, obviously, we have a rich history and a legacy, and uh, Coach Bryant is certainly a big part of that. Uh, the very first Liberty Bowl game, as it was known then at, at its founding in 1959 up in Philadelphia, Alabama, Coach Bryant played in that very first Liberty Bowl game in, in Philly, and then subsequently three others with the, the last, the fourth being uh, the 1982 game when uh, Coach Bryant um, made the decision to retire. As the story goes that, that is relayed to me uh, back from back from those days is that, you know, it was a very average year for Alabama. They were probably headed to a different bowl game that year, but once Coach Bryant made the decision to retire, he had such a great close personal relationship with Bud Dudley, the founder and then executive director of the uh, Liberty Bowl game, that he called Mr. Dudley and said, you know, told him the news, hey, I'm, I'm going to retire and I want to make my last game in Memphis at uh, the Liberty Bowl. And so here it is now, 40 years later, that's hard to believe. I was a student at uh, then Memphis State, uh, I worked as a gopher for Mutual Radio that night. So I was able to uh, attend uh, the game. I was interning at a local radio station uh, during the, my Christmas break. Uh, so I was able to cover all of those events and uh, be around Coach Bryant for the first time, obviously a, a legend. Uh, so here we are 40 years later, and uh, it is special. And, uh, you know, again, when you've been around as long as we have uh, with the history and the tradition and the legacy we have, 
you know, those those years that end in five or zero, those anniversary years, those are always special. So this year we hit the 40th year, the 40th anniversary of Coach Bryant's last game. You mentioned the Memphis Touchdown Club. Walter Lewis, the star quarterback for Alabama back in 1982, uh, was in Memphis, is in Memphis on uh, on Tuesday night to reminisce, tell those stories uh, that we're looking forward to hearing, and you know, and I'm sure we'll we'll do some special recognitions at the at the football game as well. But uh, you know, you can't talk about the Liberty Bowl, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, without talking about Alabama and in particular Coach Bryant, because uh, all through his his coaching career up until his retirement through '82. The bowl and Coach Bryant were so intertwined on so many, so many different levels, and uh, uh, you know, again, we're we're proud of that history, and and uh, still now, forty years later, still very proud that Coach Bryant chose then the Liberty Bowl, now the Autos of Liberty Bowl, as the place for him to coach his last game, and and I can tell you that down in Tuscaloosa at the uh, at the uh, Bryant Museum on the University of Alabama campus. Uh, there is a special exhibit that they have uh, put on display uh, celebrating the 40th anniversary. And Coach Bryant's grandson, Mark Tyson, donated the big, heavy parka uh, fur-lined coat that uh, Coach Bryant wore that night. That's on display, along with some other souvenirs, mementos from that 1982 Liberty Bowl game. So that's really special, too. So, again, it's hard to talk about Coach Bryant's incredible career and talk about the history of the Liberty Bowl, now the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, without uh, the two intertwining. And, again, uh, special year this year as we look back to 1982. Two more questions I have for you this sure. time. Not exactly pertaining to the autos and Liberty Bowl, but I think it's appropriate at this time to, uh, you know, talk about quickly about Ben Stooley and the legacy, you know, that he left on college football. Not only just the autos and Liberty Bowl and everybody, but in particular college football. Your runnings are, you know, and you're around the block that you've been so called with yeah. college football. Talk quickly, just talk about Ben Stooley. Well, and- obviously, he's one of the the legends, one of the icons of college football and in particular the SEC. Uh, Coach Dooley uh, was at Georgia, uh, had a team play in uh, in the uh, AutoZone Liberty Bowl back in the day. It was a Arkansas-Georgia matchup. I think it went down to the last play. I think a last uh, second field goal won the game for Georgia. So uh, Coach Dooley is a part of our rich history here as well and that long line of legendary coaches. As we just talked about Coach Bryant, Coach Dooley is a part of that. Um, but, but Coach Dooley certainly impacted not just the Southeastern Conference, but college football uh, across the country and uh, uh, leaves qu- quite a legacy. And the impact that he made on uh, Georgia, the SEC, and college football will be remembered for many, many years. Last question I have for you. I want to ask you quickly about the uh, high school all-star game. You guys named yeah. coaches. James Thomas from Houston and uh, a guy that I personally love, and he's a great coach, Tyler Gold at uh, North Point. Talk about those two guys and uh, what can fans get excited about at the All-Star game? Yeah, we're excited about those two uh, coaches being involved as our head coaches this year for the All-Star game. Uh, that event coming up on Saturday, December 10th over at Memphis University School. We'll have the top 80 to 90 senior football players here in the Memphis metro area uh, on those two squads. And uh, again, it's it's a great way to showcase uh, the talent from here in Memphis and, and uh, the metro area. And, you know, for a lot of these guys, you know, obviously the elite players have their college scholarship situations uh, put away. Uh, some, some others may be still be looking for some opportunity. So this is the last time for players to showcase for coaches. Uh, that's number one. And then number two, and, and for another uh, group of, of the players that will be uh, participating in our game. This is it for them. No more football. So their their football careers end in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl High School Football All-Star Game. So we do every, everything we can, along with our uh, committee of volunteers and the coaching staffs, to make the week of practice, the events around the game memorable, and uh, to send those, especially those young men, that this is it for them to have them leave that field that day with great memories, maybe some new friendships with with uh, players 
uh, that uh, they've been teammates with that week. And again, it's special. This is our 20th year for the All-Star Game. So again, uh, a special year for us at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, not only 40th anniversary for Coach Bryant, uh, but the 20th year for our high school football All-Star Game. And we're very proud of that. He is Harold Grader, Executive Director of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Harold, thank you so much for coming on the Mitch Davis Show. I look forward to talking with you again in two weeks. Sounds good. Mitch, thanks for having me on.